to win, but don't tell him this. Okay, I pretend I'm not trying. Okay, well, I'm gonna try hard right here because we're into the match point for Shaka versus Vitality. Reminder of the stakes. It is not just your playoff hopes that die here. It is also your world's hopes that die here. You would not be able to participate in the regional qualifier. So this could be lights out for Vitality. It's very good news for Splice though, because Vitality going through would have been the way that they got knocked out of the gauntlet. So Vitality losing here means that Splice will be playing in our gauntlet if Vitality are knocked out. We'll get into the picks and bans. Draven and Zaya removed, Rumble and Aatrox so in a way. These are very close to the game one bans from Vitality when they are on red side. The last ban being the Akali, if it comes through, would pretty much match everything. Uh, a little bit of a change from Schalke, though. They say, okay, Attila has actually been having some okay performances on this Zaya. He's been impacting some team fights pretty effectively, so we're going to get rid of that. The Yumi ban, there's a Silas ban from Vitality. So a few more options left open. Yeah, and after the performance from Abba last game on his Silas, outside of that one skirmish in the top lane where he didn't have access to his ultimate, it was a pretty strong game, but it was the Akali that was banned in game number one for Vitality instead of that Silas, and it is now the Akali that is let through and the priority pick. Does mean we'll see the Sejuani on the other side for Mowgli. Alongside that, it's going to be Corky in the mid lane here for Jizuke, or oh, the expectation is that it's a mid lane. That's usually where we see Corky play these days. Schalke have a few options left open to them. Looking at things like the Alistair, the Kaiser, uh, could even go for Kate Morg again if you want an oppressive bottom lane. I would expect uh, something like the, the Kaiser and the Alistair, maybe if they want to try to grab uh, Trix Skarner this early up. Um, but usually it is a Kaisa blind pick that Shaka like to run with. Uh, looking over at Vitality's side, however, I'm curious if now that they've transferred back over onto the red side, that they're going to try to get Cabo Shard that blind or that uh, counter pick again. The last time they were in this position, they picked up the Jace blind, mm -hmm. and I'm curious if it's going to be that same type of bold maneuver if they're going to wait a little bit longer. It's possible. We have seen Odawamne have a, a relatively good performance so far this series, so it's hard to really try and dominate him with a top lane pick. Uh, instead of playing for the Alistair, it's Kiana once again here for Schalke. Expect that to go into the hands of Trick, who was incredibly impactful on it in game one. And Jizuke trolling us just a little bit with the Karthus and the Graves hovers there, but it looks like it might be that Jace from game one for Cabo Shard. I shouldn't really talk about Hovis because it's always an easy way to bait yourself into talking about something that doesn't happen. And in fact, it won't happen this game as the Alistair is locked in for Vitalis. And it's interesting that they're trying to deny the Kaisa Alistair combo. We'll see if they double down here by banning things like uh, Braum and Nautilus and try to limit the impact that Ignar can make on kind of like high playmaking champions. Ignar is one of those cha uh, one of those players who can have an incredible impact on most champions, but giving him something that really changes the tides of a team fight uh, is always a benefit for Schalke. So Vitality trying to pinch that pool. The Gragas, of course, one of those champions that kind of have an ultimate that really changes the team fights. Well. I just feel like Ignar's champion pool is too deep that it's really hard to pin him down because even if you deny those champions, he can look towards things like his Thrash that we've seen him run um, quite successfully with upsets. Uh, Kaisa. I like the fact that we're taking away 80 carries on the side of Schalke. If they want to double down, maybe you also take away things like the Caitlyn. Caitlyn can still work fairly well with Alistar. Um, help compensate for kind of his lack of wave clear that he brings as a sport. And then the pulverized trap combo is uh, quite devastating. Yeah, I think the, the other option I would look towards is the Callista because Attila has played it in the past and that is an incredibly aggressive lane. Uh, it will be a Swain ban here from Schalke. I've heard some rumblings that it's been played in some scrims, but I haven't seen it in a long time on the LAC stage. They definitely know something that we do not. He's a, they're avoiding the Imperial shapeshifter buff that you get from Swain. Uh, Vitality here have their top laner and their AD carry left to pick. Sivir, of course, a viable option. Of course, nerfed just ever so slightly on 916. So it is going to be the counter pick for Cabo Shard. That's the expectation. Um, it does mean that Ignar now gets to play whatever champion that he wants. If he wants to go more traditional, go for something like the Nautilus. More comfort, grab his Thrash. Wouldn't even mind a uh, Morgana pick would be cool. Well, that's what you're going to get nice. from doing. Morgana locked in for Ignar. Gives uh, upset that little bit more safety in the bottom lane. Means that when the Alistair goes for the engage, you just pop a black shield down. We saw it so effective in game one. It also really helps contest the wave clear that Sivir will bring. Now, on 916, she was tapped in the damage that her ricochet will do, especially early levels. So she doesn't get as uh, immediate wave clear. And now she's also dealing across from a Kai'Sa and a Morgana with the uh, Q and Tormented Soil combined. 
And the final lock for Schalke is that Mordekaiser. We have got the counter pick here for Vitality. Last game, they had the Karma into Mord, which worked out well in the early game, but when Odo picked up a few kills in a skirmish, it really turned around. Instead, I think this is Sejuani top, with Olaf going into the jungle for Mowgli. We wondered if Vitality would bring things just a little bit more sneakily. Although they switched it to the Olaf top, I wonder. I wonder if Sejuani's going towards the top right. I'm actually feeling the Olaf top. It has been played in the LPL into Mordekaiser. Um, when you're on a long lane, something that Olaf top really brings you is the ability to chase people down. Uh, you allow yourself to get shoved in, or not necessarily allow, but you get shoved in, and then as soon as the jungler shows up, especially that 2v2, Olaf Sejuani, very powerful early on. Uh, you hit the first axe, and you just walk someone down. Now you predicted it correctly, the Olaf is going towards the top lane here for Cabo Shard. Now, interesting interaction just to quickly hit on. I believe that if you Ragnarok as Olaf, if you use your ult, you cannot be put into the realm of death. I think it counts as a disable, and so the Mordekaiser wouldn't be able to lock down Olaf. It makes it very difficult for Oduwamne to win out that lane. We'll keep our eyes on the interaction, see if that actually comes true. If so, big brain counter pick. Huge rep. Goliath brain, and what a time to bring it out here for Vitality. They are on match point against Schalke. Schalke just need one more win to advance to the next round of playoffs and face up against Rogue, who were so dominant in their 3-0 win yesterday. Vitality have to win here to keep their world dreams alive. Vitality have to win here to keep their playoff dreams alive. Vitality have to win here because Schalke are staring them down after two decisive wins. Schalke just need one more to lock out the suit. And on the other side, Schalke haven't even broken a sweat yet in this best of three. This has been a walk in the park for them. Controlled, calm, collected, even when they lost control over the single early game in game number two, they were able to very quickly get it back. So Schalke probably uh, sitting very happy looking at a 3-0 sweep. Oh, 100%. Like, if you're in this position, even if you lose a game here, you're still in a strong spot coming into the rest of the series. So, Medic, so I have an ask. <laughs> Last game, it was a bit too LCS for me. Okay. It was a bit too ARAM. It was not enough side lane. Understandable. Uh, we now have our second go at it. Mm -hmm. Abba not on the Silas this time, but on the Akali. I want both teams to pay a bit more attention to side lanes. Because while Shaka, this has looked very easy um, for them to roll over Vitality to this point, they still have much tougher opponents ahead of them if they do close the series here, and you need to have that side lane control. You cannot be constantly pulling your assassin away from side lanes into team fights. You need to have that versatility. So there's time to find evolution, to not be an LCS team, to not constantly ARAM in the mid lane, and to play a side lane, please. And both teams have enough teleports to do it as well, Foscuri. If you have six teleports in the game, you can stand in that bottom lane for just a little bit longer. You can get towards your team and join if you want to go for a team fight. But let's set up some expectations for the early game here. Let's have a thought about exactly how these teams want to play and perhaps where the junglers will be looking early on. I mean, junglers both starting bot side uh, could have a clear pathway towards the top to impact this one early on. There's also the... Uh potential gank on an early mid lane to disrupt the range versus melee matchup. I kind of expect that the jungle should be fairly quiet. Um, both these junglers really do excel off of level six and playing skirmishes in the river with those big key ultimates, um, as well as Vitality wanting to pay around package windows around the eight minute mark. Does mean that bot lane should be fun. Bot lane's always going to be fun. When Attila and Jack Troll are in the game, you never know what you're going to get. Also, Enigna trading there as much as they can, pushing forward with the Akathian range. Jack Troll takes just a little bit of damage, and the chip goes down onto Attila as well. Jazuke and Abadage trading in the mid lane. I, I do want to bring attention to it, because Jazuke is down to about half, has hit level 2 first, so he can push Abadage back, and you expect that in the ranged into melee matchup. But you often talk about not wanting to be near an Assassin's Tower when they get towards that level 3 or level 4 mark. It's usually the level 4 when they're able to kind of push through the wave and start to trade back. Of course, you never want to sacrifice your farm for um, chip damage or trade damage in the lane. You'd like to pick that up. Um, I, I liked that Jizuke was in trying to get this bounce on the wave and shoving it in. He made sure that he placed his trinket on top of him. Now, normally you see this, but a couple of times Jizuke has been caught off guard, hasn't warded his flank, and has been punished by these types of ganks. This time around, playing it much closer to the chest, slowing it down and playing safely. But that's what we're talking about. That level three assassin, when they have access to all of their abilities, suddenly they've become much more terrifying in these quirky matchups. Definitely do. Mowgli actually 
able to get through here without being spotted at all. Abelage, if he steps a little bit too far, could get called out. Trick was spotted on a ward just a little while ago, so they know the Shalka jungler is on the top side of the map, and it looks like it's going to be a battle over the Scuttler as Trick comes forward. Now he knows that Mowgli's waiting there. And he has a small window of priority here as Abba is able to rotate first. Mowgli does have Smite, whereas Trick does not have his up. Mowgli's just going to walk back in, smite it away, and then trade back onto Trick. And uh, Vitality strike first in the Scuttlecrab Wars. And this is important not just for the mid lane between Jazuke uh, and Abba, but for Cabo Shard up into that top lane. He's constantly had Odo pressed forward underneath the tower, trying to chip away probably with these far away axes. Uh, and having access to the Scuttlecrab, as well as Mowgli getting eyes on Trick, unlocks Cabo Shard to continue to be aggressive up there. You can see Mowgli actually with total control of the river with getting, uh, by getting both of these scuttle crabs. Across the board, slight CS leads for Vitality. 10 farm in the top lane, as Kabashad, as you said, with the Undertow continues to push in. A lead in the mid lane to be expected, as Suzuki is playing a Rage Champion into a Melee Champion. But he's also got the Kleptomancy, so we have to keep an eye on how much gold he's building up through that Keystone. Yeah, this is the unfortunate spot. If um, Abba can hold this wave in front of his tower, depending on how much Abba trades damage back on Jazuke, he may actually have to pull Mowgli to put the wave in a better spot. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was, because um, the cannon wave didn't do a lot of damage in pushing it in. I think what you always have to look at is how many ranged minions ha you have, how many melee minions you have. As Jazuke goes quite low, Mowgli trading in here, but Abadagi can just jump back with a shuriken flip, and it makes it quite easy for him to escape. But that's the threat you're talking about there on Jazuke. Yeah, and Jazuke was just kind of testing the waters. Mowgli comes to help him push it in, and then also if Abba did overstep, your jungler's right behind you. Um, but because he took so much damage, it's not worth the risk. So gonna take a very early back and burn his TP. He's gone for the Hex Drinker first, as we see Corky's doing most of these high burst assassin. Uh, I was going to say Assassin Mages, but it doesn't really make much sense. Into a high burst magic damage Assassin, that's when you want a Hex Drinker, because it means you don't get burst down and he hits that level 6 with the perfect execution. And we see Corky all the time, and we've talked uh, you know, a little bit about why he's so powerful. It's because you have uh, early game safe insurance for very good late game scaling power. So Corky can survive virtually any lane, even when matchups don't feel as good as this one. You can see that Abba is starting to get the better of him in a lot of these trades. But Jizuke knows that all I got to do is hang on. I'm going to have massive range in the late game. I have ridiculous damage even on 916. So it's just a matter of time before I pop off on this Corky. Looking for that level six and package mark. Mowgli's up towards level six pretty soon as well. Abadag is already pinged across towards the ultimate mark. Trick, a little bit underleveled, you know, lost out on those early Scuttle Crabs. It's only at level four and is kind of wasting just a tad of time here as he waits for the Scuttle Crab to respawn. This is a gank setup. They're waiting for Attila to back and then to TP back in the lane. Upset and Ignar are actually holding this wave. So Attila, if he TPs back in, he's going to be very far forward. And Trick is deciding, am I ganking mid? Am I ganking bottom? He's dancing around like the uh, like he's wearing a hula hoop, but he goes in towards the mid lane. Jazuke with a hex drink, Abadage jumping forward. Jazuke gets taken out, and now Mowgli will look for the trade. Jumps forward, flashes around, but Abad Abadage still has the Twilight Shroud. Mowgli unable to find his man. Very well played by both Abba and Trick. Uh, I love this setup again, cross map from Upset or excuse me, Shalka, because they could have decided to pull that gank to the mid lane again. Ignar and Upset held the wave here to try to get Attila to overextend, but the call came through. Hey, I'm a Kali. I have access to level six. I've got the damage to fall up. Let's get me snowballed. And Trick immediately pivots. That's exactly what he was doing. He's like, okay, I'll wait. Yeah, just wait around. I, I said he was waiting for the Scuttlecrab, but that's spawning top side of the map, so. Wasn't even anticipating that. This control ward, of course, keeping Jazuke in the dark, and Trick just flashes in. Very hard for Jazuke to do anything about this. Couldn't really escape. Had gone for the Hex Drinker for a little bit more defensiveness, but it wasn't enough. And it makes it uh, an early lead for Shalka on the kill score. But in terms of gold, we're pretty much even. Yeah, but now we do have level 6 access from Mowgli, whereas Trick doesn't have it. Now, we still saw that Kiana brings a uh, substantial CC, even without that. But here is the time to hit back. Abadage still has Flash, Twilight Shroud, and the Flip. It's I was hard to hit. I was trying to tee it up. I was like, okay, Vitality, hit me with the ultimates. He just Twilight Shrouds and just, it all disappears. It's the safety of Akali <laughs> in the mid lane, though. You can see how defensively he's playing, realizing that Mowgli could be coming in. He didn't actually spot this one. Jackdaw flashing forward. They're going to catch him out. Easy enough stuff for Vitality. They're on the board. And Abba went around the corner. He's like, it's Vitality. They could dive yeah. me, but they won't. Narrator, they did. <laughs> And Jack Troll's just, when he comes, when he wants to set up his mid laner, he spends a lot of time around that. You see him so often try and team up with Mowgli for some of these ganks. 
and it didn't really lose too much because Ignar tried to rotate across but wasn't able to get there in time. Now, Mowgli stealing away this blue means that Trick will just go towards mid. Odo, maybe something too far forward here. Camusot's still there. He's got the blast cone. He's fine. Um, I do like the point that you bring up about Jack Troll and his influence on the mid lane. Vitality kind of remind me of Fnatic in this instance and in that you often see Hilly pair up with Nemesis. And what uh, Hilly's doing is he's helping Nemesis get priority through a numbers advantage, but normally Broxas. Uh, also there. Now, Vitality almost never have Mowgli there. Yeah. He was in that instance, but normally it's actually just Jizuke and Jack Troll. And again, this is kind of the, the thing when everyone's firing on all cinder cylinders for Vitality, when Mowgli is also there for the play, you can see how much cleaner that they look um, versus when it's just kind of two members out of sync of everyone else. So Vitality so far are looking much more on the ball and much more like a unit. Very similar to their game to start when they had that 2,000 gold lead about the 18 minute mark. Here we're nine minutes in, they've got about 1,000 in their back pocket. And once again, we see an Alistair going for the early Moby boots, not even upgrading his Reddick Shield to a Targon's Brace. Says, okay, I'm gonna roam around the map. I'm gonna try and team up with Mowgli as much as possible. And here, perhaps, is that first package play you talked about, Fosk, or not. Right onto the blue buff. He ganged that he blue got buff him. so hard. <laughs> ah, Smackdown. But this is indicative of kind of how uh, Vitality really like to play. A lot of teams like Shalka will usually get priority through mid and then use their mid lane uh, advantage into one of their side lanes. Vitality normally kind of skip that step and they instead try to gain priority through side lanes and then rotate it into the mid lane. So with uh, Jizuke taking a very defensive itemization in terms of the Hex Drinker, having things like the package, I have a feeling it's mostly about, okay, I'll push this wave and then I'll look for a play with the roaming Alistar. A lane we haven't talked about too much so far is that top side of the map. Jizuke trading here onto Abadage. Jack Troll there with the Hex Flash. But Trick is here, and now they don't realize Jack Troll is waiting. The Glacial Prism locks up Trick in place. Abadage escapes for the moment. Supreme display of talent will knock Vitality back. Ignite here to try and help out his jungler as Vitality continue on the chase. Both teams escape unscathed. Very cool in theory idea there. Jizuke is like, I'm looking delicious. I'm high in fiber. Take a bite. I'm out of position. Meanwhile, Jack Troll had like slipped in underneath Fog of War and under oh, a tower there. Jack Troll, that was bad. Okay. A big will come back. But Ignar goes forward. Yeah, that was just poor play from Jack Troll. Going for the fight. Didn't realize that, you know, well, I, I, he must have realized towers do damage because they've always done damage. But that was, yeah, it was just weak. I was, I was all aboard the compliments. I thought it was cool. We, we spoke too long, we dove a tower. It was all that delicious fiber, Foscure. <laughs> That's what he was going for. When we get the replay, yeah, you can we'll, see. We'll have a look at have a look at the fiber content of the replay. Uh, <laughs> even, even though Vitality, you know, threw away a life there in the mid lane, we'll watch it again. Because this first play, as you say, well, it was good, oh, but no. the second play is just... Uh, we missed the good first play. Let's have a look at exactly what Jack... Okay. So the, I kind of understand yeah, it. Yeah, because the idea is that if Alistair actually locks him up um, while the... Uh, what, the Q from Corky yeah. lands, you're gonna get do massive burst damage and you'll probably just kill Abba there. But because the Q doesn't land from Corky and uh, Akali is able to disengage, then it looks like a disaster. Yeah. Good news, Vitality got the Rift, Rift Herald. Herald. Yeah. Can use that to open up one of these turrets, maybe even just look for some plates and some gold. Down towards the bottom lane, Upset's had a bit of free time to push in towards this tower. He'll be trying to pick up a plate for himself on the Kaiser. Might be a little bit too long as that cannon wave has dissuaded him for the moment. And bot lane has pretty much just been about the AD carries bumping heads while the rest of the teams play around mid. Top lane, Kavajad has built up an early lead on this Olaf, kind of to be expected. I think the question becomes for us how much that Olaf impacts the game as we go on. Because we expected him to win the laning phase, but after that, is he going to have as much impact in a team fight as a Mordekaiser? Well, I think what they really wanted is they wanted to be able to fight over an early dragon by using um, TP from Kavashard. Uh, but because the early dragon went down for Shalka, they found their window where Vitality uh, overreached for the Rift Herald. Now, we'll see if they're able to get something back with the Rift Herald, but in the time that it took to take the Herald down, reset back on the map. Shalka just walked to Infernal and got it for free. Early Infernal Dragon for Shalka will help with Abadage on this mid lane assassin. About a 20 CS, goal, uh, 20 CS lead for Jizuke. Mowgli waiting around the corner here. They put a lot of pressure, a lot of time into trying to get Jizuke as strong as possible. They know they want him to deal with Abadage if it ends up being a game about the side lanes that we want to see. But will it actually pay off in the end? That's always the question. When you see a team invest this much into one of their players, you have to question whether it will pay dividends. Now, I do want to point out that Shalka know that Vitality have Mowgli in the area. He was spotted out into a ward, so Trick is just being very patient, has now revealed himself. And this is Shalka just uh, wasting Mowgli's time. Unless I mean, he tries fine. to force this. He could try and force it. That's a very Vitality thing to do. 
We saw them do it a lot in game one. For the time being, he's going to go down towards the bottom side where Schalke actually have total vision control. And Mowgli may be going to push too far forward. Jackdaw goes for the engage, but Trick is here. TP's coming in from both teams. Jackdaw forced away. Here comes Mowgli, lands the Glacier Prism onto Trick. And it's Cabochard who's there first. One down. Odo Omnit's going to try and face off Jackdaw. Gets him in the realm of death and takes him out. Ragnarok used here by Cabochard as Odo Omnit now caught out by Jisuke. But Abadage is on the way. Has the perfect execution. Could look for the fight. Instead, Vitality disengage. And it's a one for one trade in the bottom lane. And I feel like it's the TP that really saves the day as now Vitality are doubling down on the one fight. They've got the minion Ooh. wave. The Rift Herald comes out. Abadage could look for the flank here. Upset's backing away, but he has the TP. Cabochard coming in, no ultimate on that Olaf. Rift is going to get a charge in. Death's Grass doesn't land, but the binding does. It's only on to Mowgli. O Odo taken down to about half HP. Jazuke still pushing forward. Must have the Valkyrie available if he's going to step this far up. He does, and he escapes for the moment. Towers, uh, plates fall in the bottom lane just as the 14-minute mark comes across. So Vitality found all of the advantage they could out of that Rift Herald. Yeah, they are currently hanging on to the gold lead. We've now seen a swap come through. Now Attila does have access to TP. I'll hold it, though, because Cabo, feeling lucky. That's grass, pulls Cabo shot back, yet to tank up the tower. Now he does. Odo Black shielded the binding lands, but Cabo will take one. He'll fall in response. And Schalke answer with a kill of their own in the bottom lane. And it was a good bet for Schalke to take that Someone was going to overextend from Vitality, look for the dive. Ignar hides himself in the brush. Cabo does look for the dive, and then Ignar gets the last laugh. And you, we'll have another look at the start of this fight, because as Jack Troll engaged, you started shaking your head first. Yeah, because if the TP doesn't come through, then suddenly uh, you've just kind of killed your Alistar, but Mowgli does get here in time, as well as the damage from Cabo Shard comes through. And again, this is what Vitality wanted to have happen over the first Infernal, but they missed their window to fight for it, but they still get access from that cross map play and the TP this time around. So that feels good, but in terms of like total gold, using the Rift Tail, getting a couple of plates, I'm still not sure whether I want to call that just an advantage over the last five minutes, but they're barely holding on to the gold lead, so. Yeah, you can see that if Cabochard's in a pure 1v1 in that fight, he wins that every day of the week. But because Ignar stayed around, protected his top laner, Cabochard goes down. And just a little bit more gold in Schalke's pockets. Now, a 600 gold lead for Vitality. He's shrunk just a little bit. Trick trading in here. Jumps forward. All of Vitality are there. Trick doesn't care. Supreme display of Tana will take him out. And now Mowgli, perhaps caught out as well, has the flash, has the Arctic Assault, but Abadage still on the chase. Looking for Attila, if he can get there. Twilight Shroud comes down, a little bit of extra movement speed. Abadage not going to go in with the second proc of the perfect execution. And uh, because of that, Schalke find a kill. And well, they're just they're kind of just stepping into the faces of Vitality now. They know if Kabushar is not around, if Chizuke is not around, Vitality really don't have that much damage. And it's uh, Schalke recognizing that the composition is really good fighting in the jungle, not just because they have the uh, Kiana and she works all really well when she's surrounded by these walls, but also because you have the mobility of a champion like Akali. So they're going to have that free, uh, I guess, step forward, step into their faces is what you said, especially when the Black Shield comes down on them, to constantly look for plays like that, especially when Jizuke is just like passively farming mid lane. Yep. Jizuke trying to farm up towards those two, three items. You know, Infinity Edge on top of that Trinity Force makes him an incredible powerhouse when we get towards later portions of the game. Let's have a look at some of the other items that have been finished. Storm Razor on Upset, Hextech Gunblade on Abadage. You've got an Essence Reaver finished on towards Attila, who's on this civil, it was a little bit nerfed, but we didn't really see too much impact on the ricochet nerf in the laning phase. Yeah, and it's going to be more about the boomerang blade in terms of the team fights, at least at this stage in the game. So she hasn't lost uh, her her bite there. Now I do want to say that we're setting up for the infernal. This starts with getting priority through the mid lane, which is what our teams are jockeying to do right now. Now Abba is in the top side because he actually has his TP that's just come off of cooldown, playing cross map. And now the call is going to be from Shalka. Do you allow this infernal to go down because you've lost vision control over the area and uh, trade it for a cross map tower, and that seems to be the call, but this would be bad. It's exactly what they're doing. Odo Omni just chased out here by Cabo Shard. We wondered if the Olaf pick into the Mordekaiser would work. Cabo Shard showing us just how powerful it can be. Vitality looking to take that bot lane tower while Schalke continue with the cross map trades, take top playing those side lanes. But this gets really dangerous if Vitality are able to punish this. Oh, Ignar dodges away. Jisuke on the chase. Ignar pops the stopwatch, but the boomerang blade will find its mark. Vitality missed a lock, but still find the kill. And the thing was, is if Vitality had executed that correctly and were able to kill Shalka there, suddenly this swings wildly in control for Vitality. But because they didn't connect with some of those key ultimates like the Sejuani ult, uh, Shalka do manage to kind of like even the playing field or, or stop the bleeding. Vitality's still holding on to the gold lead, but that could have been much worse for Shalka. 
And the, the question becomes now for Schalke, how do you deal with Cabochard in a side lane? If Oduwamne can't step up to him with a Seeker's arm card, do you then need to put Abadage down there? But it doesn't feel like an Akali is going to match up well into an Olaf. So maybe you sacrifice bot lane, you sack wherever Cabochard is, and you try and play in the other two lanes. I mean, the reality is, is that because you have so much mobility with the Kiana, as Trick's actually looking for the assassination. Jump straight onto Jazuke, but Jazuke dodges away with the Valkyrie, and Trick burnt, hits a flash for nothing. But we should see Trick doing this. If Odo's going to continue to be pressured, onto the bot lane by the Olaf. Like, if Shalka can't dodge uh, the Vitality Olaf matchup, then Trick can just use the passive from Kiana and very quickly uh, shadow underneath him and then be there for his team if they actually need to pull Trick towards the uh, other three members of Shalka on the other side of the map. All right, see if Trick is going to be able to do that as now Shalka group up towards mid. Attila and Jackdaw maybe a little bit pushed up. The binding doesn't connect. Spell should use by Attila. The root still lands onto Jackdaw. Abadage can be! Oh, that was uh, a little bit braver than I expected him to do, but he was able to dodge all the way back and Oduwane joining up with his team. Still Schalke unable to take out that mid lane tower. I think it's one of the most frustrating things about Akali is that as an assassin, um, her ability to play so far forward because she has so many safety tools, but she kind of acts like a LeBlanc in that instance. Yep. Because she can poke from so far away as a melee champion and then just kind of like somersault back to safety, it's just so ridiculous, which is why it feels like no matter what Riot tries to hit her with or, or change her, the, the core kit is kind of the problem. There's just too much good stuff packed onto a single champion. It feels like you need to get rid of one of those mechanics, really. You know, being able to jump back to the Shroud or something like that. But then you remove a lot of what makes Akali Akali and what makes her so fun to watch in some of these games, although not so fun to play against from time to time. Abadage is sitting at 1-1 one, one, and 172 farm on him. Jizuke farming up on the Corky. Looks like he's going to go rapid fire cannon next up and then perhaps build up towards the Infinity Edge. At 20 minutes, it's pretty much like an even state. Vitality have the slight gold lead, probably have the game in their hands, but we've seen things swing very rapidly in this series. And my eyes are on this guy on your screen, uh, Jizuke. Now you can see that he spent a lot of time in these sidelines, does have an EXP advantage, and it's trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Abba. Needs to play it perfectly. Oh, once again, the Glacial Prism doesn't connect. Trick was able to land the double stun onto Jack Troll and Mowgli, or the root. Jizuke still has that package. You talked about how powerful it can be for Vitality. They haven't really found an avenue to use it yet, but they are continuing to try and unleash Jizuke in that side lane. I mean, the damage is being done because not only is Jizuke getting the better off Shalko on the top side, Cabo is still a massive problem into the bot side. The waves have been stacked. Vitality are shadowing underneath him. Uh, Vitality just oh. needs to not get caught. Yeah, as you say it though, they do. Jackdaw caught out here, teleport coming in. Jackdaw has the unbreakable win, but now the fight is going to erupt. Schalke looking for it. Ignar caught out down towards the bottom side. Cabochard already going to take him out. Death's Grass flashed away from there, and Vitality are looking for the 4v4, but instead they back away. They look towards the mid lane and perhaps think about opening up that tower. Lots of pings coming down. Yeah, inside track on the mid lane. They should be able to get at least some good damage here, if not just shove it down. It is low. They should just take it. They will start to open up on it. It's Attila going for it. Odo trading down towards the bottom side. Upset there as well. Mowgli goes golden for the moment. Teleport coming in now, and Schalke want this fight. Mowgli's already down. Attila caught out by Abadage up towards the top side of the fight. He's already done. And now Trick lands a perfect ultimate. Jizuke caught out. He's down to 200 HP. Kamashar trying to trade into upset and Abadage, but he just doesn't have the damage. He's done. And now Jizuke, no mana, no life, no friends around him. Schalke find the TP, find the fight. Jizuke continuing to survive. But in the end, someone from Schalke will pick him up. It's upset, flashes in, and takes him out. Okay. Jack Troll, though, maybe looking for a little bit of a fight. Okay, you say Frost, and Jack Troll says okay as well. He backs away. Okay, kids' gloves are coming off. Vitality, what are you doing? That is a perfect example of everything that is wrong with this team. You have the opportunity to go for the objective. Just walk up to the mid tower and kick it down. Instead, they overreach. They look for these kills, and they lose any advantage that they had. Suddenly, Shaka have snowballed back into this game, are in a massive position. Just hit the tower! Totally agree with you. This alien where we play shows it best. Attila all by himself. Vitality leave him. Billy no mates in the mid lane. Abadage all he has to do is TP in. And Kabajad, you know, he's trying his best. He's the fed carry on this team. But as soon as Vitality gets split up like that, Schalke are just picking them off one by one. They prioritize the kills. They do not prioritize the objectives. And that has been the problem for Vitality this entire series. And that is the key difference between these teams and why Schalke are looking at a 3-0. And it was only a moment ago we were talking about Vitality having the game 
game in their hands, being able to play with about a thousand to two thousand gold lead. Now, Shalko in are in the lead. You have two completed items on your Kaiser. You've got a Morello Hextech Gunblade on your Akali, and you have another assassin who's got a dust plate. So now the game is back into Shalko's hands. They finally have the gold lead. You just talked about all of the key items that they have. Now, do Shalko learn from Vitality's mistakes? Do they set up? Do they overreach for kills? Do they play silence correctly? This is what we're now looking for. It's never been the Shalko way, or at least not this split. Shalko are the by the numbers, the fundamentals team. They will set up the vision control. They'll talk about those triangles of vision around Baron. They'll set up the waves in perfect sync to look for these towers. Facial Prism used here. Abadar get caught out, still has the flash. Jackson jumping in. It's all onto upset. Pops the killer instinct, but now Vitality get the shutdown, and Ezo is praising them. It's Shalka who make the misstep. Down towards the bottom side of this fight, Odo is trading in against Kabushaw, but you just can't do anything against the rampaging Olaf. Odo still trying to get the damage down the realm of death comes out, and Odo taken out by Kabushaw in his own realm of death. Jazuke jumping forward almost takes out Ignar, has to burn the flash to get away. I will say this, when someone throws, someone does need to catch, and both Shalka and Vitality are playing catch this game. We're not playing side lanes, we're going back to A ramp. Shalka just run it back into the mid lane, Vitality meat grinder them, and now have position on the Baron. Oh, uh, but Jazuke overstays, and he's dead. Frost head in your hands. That, th th there's just been a series of unfortunate events. It's the lemony snicket, as you would call it. And both the teams are being like, okay, this is a slippery slope. Let's just run down this one and see who can throw harder at each other. This is like howling abyss. Just get away from the mid lane. <laughs> you asked for it, Fosk. You said side lanes. They heard you. They thought you wanted to avoid them. Okay. Deep breath, reset, let's have another go at this one, and let's look at what happened here. Uh, reminder, we talked about this in game number two, now in game number three. Shalka love to do this. Even when they have an assassin like Akali, they will pull the Akali from a side lane to look for team fights. But this works perfectly for Vitality because they love just running at you in the mid lane, and when you run into that, that's when Vitality find advantages here. And you can see, like, Kabashad is doing his job on this Olaf. He, ha he has a perfect champion to deal with Mordekaiser. It works out well, but then even at the end, Jizuke escapes, but he's jumping in for Ignar and then flashing away to try and get out of these fights. Save your flash, man. Keep it up for the next fight so that you can take out someone like Upset, like Abadage, instead of going for the support. But we are coming to the apex of this game. Again, all of the key itemization have come out for both teams. There's still an advantage for Shalka, I would say, in terms of kind of which carries have come online. Um, I'm waiting for kind of like one more item from Corky before he becomes absolutely devastating by playing into the side lanes. Let's see how we set this up. Let's see if we play the side lanes or if we're going back mid, boys. We will see. Life on the line here for Vitality. Losing this series knocks them out, not only of the playoffs, but of playoff of world's contention. Schalke 2-0 up have looked pretty darn devastating throughout these games, especially when we get towards the later portion in inverted commas. We'll see here if Vitality can show something they haven't in the first two matches. So both teams, again, jockeying for different objectives. What Shaka really need to do is they need to take down this mid lane tower. Um, Vitality really want a big pick so that they can rotate into the Baron. So what they're waiting on is Kaboshar to actually get this wave. Oh, it's not timed right. Oh, disaster. What they wanted was Kabashar to time the wave top lane to get forced into the tower while uh, Vitality were all underneath him. So one of these objectives will go down. Either Vitality would get a pick because someone was rotating to catch the wave, or uh, someone wouldn't be rotating from Shalka that Kabashar could shove down the tower. But we're desynced, we're having our backs staggered, and we're resetting the same play and kind of stuck in this groundhog day of running into mid lane repeatedly. Shalka, on the other hand, tend to sink their backs pretty effectively. They go in here for some vision control. They have the control ward on the Baron, and now they have total river control. And with Upset now hitting three items, I do want to have a, a, a quick talk about scaling and team fights as the game progresses. We, we often talk about Shalka as a, an incredible front to back team fighting team. Here, if we get to say 35, 40 minutes, is it even in terms of how these fights will go? Or do you think one side has an advantage? I kind of think that in the current day of League of Legends, it's mostly execution based. Um, not one team usually gets just kind of like a clear eye out scale you like we used to say in the old days, like this team can't play past 35 minutes. Because I think there's options. It's just who plays it better.
Oh, not Jack Troll. He's in the realm of death with Odor Wamne, who's trying to hit the obliterate. Can't quite land it. Oh, Jack teleport. Troll is the back. Teleport coming in. And here becomes a fight around the Baron. Jack Troll's still alive. Odor Wamne almost goes down, but goes golden. Abadage chasing onto Attila. He flashes away, but Abadage goes in for Jutsuke, jumps all the way back. And now the rest of Shaco are here for the fight. Down towards the bottom side. Camera shot's actually chasing out Upset. Upset nowhere near this. Oh, it's actually Trick. Sorry, not Upset. Trick goes down. Upset here, trying to fight onto Jutsuke. He goes in with the Academy of Rain. And Jutsuke's down. And now Mowgli is in a 1v4 situation. Here comes Cabo. Comes out. Cabo coming from the bottom side of the fight as Attila tries to re-engage. Abadaga going back, doesn't have the teleport to join this fight. Cabo shot unable to get there in time. And now Attila just cleans up the river control. It's upset up towards the top side, but Vitality do not want any more of this fight. And Shaka keep taking the bait. They teleport Abba into the fight and Vitality will just pull them down to their level and beat them with the experience. Like, welcome to hell. This is it. It's been an interesting day for us, I'll give you that. Abadage trading onto Attila here as well. Doesn't have the open lands, the sure can flip. Don't really want to jump on towards an Alistair who can just knock you up as soon as you get in there. And uh, across the board, we're back towards the status quo. But it comes back down to execution, what we were talking about, how you actually execute on these team fights if we get all 10 members there at the same time instead of these uh, random picks back and forth. Um, if it's a front-to-back fight, in terms of if you get Jack Troll and Mowgli Sejuani in front of Attila and uh, Jizuke, it should actually be a very clean fight for Vitality. They have a lot of range with the Ricochet as well as the Corky package. You have potential super tanks with the Sejuani and the Alistar. Um, you can see when things don't go like that, it's a bit messier. Whereas if a fight is moving and you're able to dive back lines, that's what looks really good for Shalka here. Um, the ability to get uh, people like Akali back and assassinating people. I do think my favorite part of this fight was Cabochard just running at Trick. <laughs> so that's all he did for about 30 seconds. I mean, Hoff's got one play pattern. What do you want? Here we go! He, he takes out one in a 2v1. Oh, two, two. Two. oh, upset. You have to dodge around this. The undertow available for Cabochard. Doesn't quite hit it. Teleport coming in for Vitality. Because why Run. wouldn't you TP into a fight? Upset lands the Void Seeker. Jizuki coming down from the bottom side. But meanwhile, at the top side, there's another fight. And it's Vitality. Coming out on top, Abadage gets onto Attila. Ignar Low has popped the Soul Shackles, landing onto Mowgli, and Abadage gets a double. Upsets escape down towards the bottom side as here comes Jizuke. Has the flash. Valkyrie over the wall. Jack still on the chase. Great binding. Abadage. Right, Was it a big TP the top? Coming in. Oh, it's all the TPs for skewing. Kabushad there, Abadage jumping back, and Jizuke, even the Hex Drinker won't save you now. Oh, he's got the flash still up. Void Seeker doesn't hit. How, how do you follow these fights? It's just everything going on at once. In all of the chaos, uh, Abba, being in for Baron. Abba has picked up a lot of kills. This Akali is actually probably the biggest winner of all of this uh, bizarre fighting that's happening because Abba is now very powerful. Okay, this could be the game-defining fight. We have to put our serious caps on for a second because Oda Wamne and Shalka have started up the Baron, but Kabashad is here. Look at Jizuke. He's, oh. he's zooming over. All it takes is a moment. Jizuke zooming over. over. Blue buff continues to be taken here by Shalka Kabashad acting as the bouncer. This is actually really dangerous. Uh, Vitality are a team that are bold enough that if they feel that Shalka actually back, look at that, they on the way ping Baron. I think we'll just start the Baron. Uh, you've got Kabashad, you've got the rest of the team. They're going for it, and all the teleports, of course, will just burn in that skirmish. They're gonna do the Baron. Vitality's gonna do the Baron, you have to feel. Oh just my god, in the mid lane. they're not doing the Baron, they're and setting they up a trap. Done it yet. They're setting up a trap. Vision control is all in favor of Vitality. Death Scrawl's gonna pull two back. And here goes Odo Wamne. Pops Mowgli into the realm of death. Ignar trying to get some damage down from the side. But look at Trick so low. Black Shield comes onto him. Jumping forward. Lands the damage. Oh my god, Attila! Almost down! But Vitality already taken to one down one. It's a one for one trade. As now Shaka trying to open up. Arsay coming in. And perhaps Vitality have died too greedily. Perhaps Vitality have gone too deep. Because Upset arrived in time. It's a five for three in favor of Shaka. And eventually someone's gonna to take that Baron. And that was devastation there. Jizuke actually failed his Valkyrie over the wall, wasn't able to disengage as the upset came in on the Kai'Sa. Now it's Shaka who have priority over the Baron. They have two members, they have the Kai'Sa that has incredible shred over this objective and they should be able to take it down. They sh Oh God. I don't think they could take this down. No, they could do it. Upset? Remember, the one of the Baron's attacking does less damage. Oh, that was close. Okay, Shaka get it. 32 minutes into this game. I have a look at how Shalka set up for it, or I, whatever this is. I actually really like the game plan here from Vitality to try to set the trap. The uh, unfortunate thing is that they're not able to immediately kill who they grab first, and then it's about trying to find the right target, and Shalka are just able to get the CC out to delay the fight long enough that here we go, Upset finally joins it. Jizuke doesn't get over the wall, there's the Valkyrie directly into it. 
And then it's just upset on cleanup duty, you know, you can, it's quite easy for him when he joins a fight this late just to take it out and then the Baron comes out for Schalke in the end. And it may not have felt like a big thing, but imagine if Jutuke does escape that fight because it was just two members of Schalke that survived. If you have Corky rockets firing into you as they're very low health getting the Baron, that could have been the difference there of Vitality being able to stall out that Baron. The benefit for Vitality, or the good thing here for Vitality is although we still have a two and a half minute Baron buff on Schalke, Vitality have relatively good wave clear and they have a lot of towers still standing. It's going to be a while before Vitality, uh, before Schalke are knocking on the inhibitor turrets and so maybe Vitality get another shot, get another fight around a Baron before this game is well and truly out of their hands. Ups is going to open up two towers in the bottom lane and now joins the rest of his team in mid but there's no wave there for Schalke. They're going to have to wait a long time before they can really go for that mid lane tower. And this mid tower has kind of been the last bastion of hope for Vitality. So many good fights have been created around it but now with Schalke having so so much access uh, on the side lane pressure because they've taken down that bot tier tower and it's only the inner tower top side. Uh, they're going to constantly be able to threaten potential dives under this and just slowly push it down. You can see Trick threatening the dive, looking for his opportunity. Jack's going in though. Right, just glory popped on the hunt used as well, but a little bit late there for Matilla. Yeah, Shaka just making sure that, okay, that's fine, run at us, we'll absorb necessary cooldowns. We can just continue to sit here, let our side lane stack up. And a good thing for Schalke, or a, a little note of how they're playing this, is Upset's actually, he waited for the wave to be cleared, then went and got red buff, and now he's back here when the wave is pushing in. It's those small things that really maximize the efficiency of a push with something like Baron, and now Schalke can push in with the cannon wave and look for that next turret if they want it. Instead, they back away, they say, okay, we've got enough, three towers out of this Baron, two and a half thousand gold on the Baron power play. And they are about 3,000 gold ahead coming into the next major objectives. Cloud Drake up. Let's see how Vitality are going to answer the next wave of push. Let's have a quick look across items. You've almost got four on Abadage. I see how much gold he's sitting on, about 1,100. So he's almost at his Rabadons. Should be able to back and get it now. You've got four complete and the QSS on Upset. And he's actually got a grand and a half sitting in his back pocket. Yeah, and there's the Rabadons that you were just talking about for Abba coming through. He's made his back. So um, Shaka feeling very powerful on their item uh, spikes. That said, Vitality also have a really... I'm going to say easy to execute composition, but we really haven't gotten to see it at all. Uh, again, their range advantage is really strong, so they should be able to walk up to fights, lay down a lot of poke with the reach of Sivir and Corky before the big fights happen. Uh, unfortunately, this game has just been so messy with people getting picked out in kind of like 3v3s that become 5v5s that you haven't gotten to see that from Vitality's comp. I think a major thing for Vitality in these fights is how much impact Cabochard can have. He's the highest level in the game at level 18. He's got GA, Black Cleaver, more and and Death's Dance, if he can isolate Upset or Trick before they have an impact in the fight, he entirely changes the landscape of a team fight. I also think that he's dissuading a lot of uh, lane assignments from Shaka onto side lanes because they are afraid that if the uh, Olaf shows up, especially if it's Mordekaiser, that he actually can just mow them down and push them over. Definitely can. Vitality, last bastion of hope for them as they continue to hold on towards this game. 2-0 down in the series. There we yeah, go. Hopes. See, that's how that should work. You make sure that Jizuke hits so much poke, he can chunk multiple people out, and then when you're feeling confident that you have the health advantage in the fight, then you pull the trigger on something like a Sejuani ultimate or like Jack Trolls Engage. Whereas Shaka, it puts so much more onus on kind of creating um, this hit and run style of play because they have so much mobility and assassination potential between Kiana, Akali, and Kaisa. It means that they need to be very peculiar about playing around vision and more importantly, denying Vitality's vision. Seems to be, that's what they're trying to do. If you have a look just through the jungles, you can see a couple of control wards at the blue buff for Vitality, a couple of wards here as well on where, about where Jizuke is. But J Vitality actually have some control of their own top side, not that much in the bottom side. So what we'll see and what it looks to be is Trick shadowing Odawamne and hoping that someone overextends, hoping that a Kabushad or a Jizuke pushes up a little bit too far there. And then Trick, if they find the pick, they can then use their triple teleports to try and break open this base of Vitality. Things certainly seem to have slowed down. We might be waiting for the next big objective, but otherwise people are just kind of grabbing the safe farm and hunkering down for this next 56 seconds before Baron spawns. But this is where Vitality thrives. You know, we've seen them so many times with their back against the wall. Remember back to Worlds 2018 against Gen G, against RNG. When they were pushed, that's when they started to fight back, and which is why I haven't lost hope for Vitality yet. Although Shaoka are in the driver's seat, are 2,000 gold ahead. All it takes is one moment of brilliance from Jizuke, from Attila, from Kabushar to really change a game. Which is 
It going in. Stratro straight onto the back line. They've tried to catch out Abadar getting already. He's down. The moment of brilliance has arrived. And now Shalka are running for the hills. Odoamne puts him in the realm of death. Upset trying to get the damage down. But look at Kabashad. He's that front line. He's that tank. One down. Jack Troll goes out. Trick jumping in. Upset there to follow as well. But already two more kills come out for Vitality. And now Upset has to run. He jumps onto the back line. He takes out Mowgli. That was beautiful from Upset. But Vitality are now on the chase. They're looking for him. But Upset just needs to delay them if possibly get out. I think Jizuke is going to clean it up. Is he? Oh. Is he? Upset with the fancy feet. He almost gets it. He just can't quite. And Chizuke comes out on top. But an absolute hero play from Upset because Mowgli is dead. The Baron has spawned, which means that Vitality can no longer turn towards the monster objective and instead are racing towards this base. They could just win the game right here, though. Abadage 15 seconds away. Three carries up for Vitality. They're going to at least take the inhibitor and they'll look for the win. It's on Ignar trying to defend. Solar, Soul Shackles, Flash, and Ignite. Abadage, five away, Vitality fighting back. Their backs against the wall. They found the play, they found the picks. And Vitality will not go quietly into the night. A brutal game. Very messy in the mid game, but that's where Vitality thrive. They were able to see through the chaos that they had created. They got the, the, the cleaner team fight on the back half, just ran it down at Shalka, made the picks when it was necessary, and then ran it all the way home to the Nexus. And that's the spirit of Vitality. That's the team they've always been, the one that goes onto the brink of disaster and fights back. The team that thrives off emotion, that thrives off momentum. And perhaps we've seen a turning of the tides in this series. Now, I do want to point out something that probably wasn't picked up on stream, but I think the audience really clued in on, is right before that team fight happened, Vitality erupted in noise. You heard it from, like, deep within their chest, this yell that comes from them. We talk about that they're an 